So let's go through history. Many patients receive post-mastectomy radiotherapy after their surgery, radical mastectomy or modified radical mastectomy prior to the 80s. NSABP, BO2, randomized patients after radical mastectomy to receive regional radiation, and they found no difference in overall survival but decrease in uh, regional recurrence. Initiated in 1971, NSABP4, Randomized patients after radical mastectomy, total mastectomy alone, or total mastectomy and radiation, if clinical not negative, and if not positive to radical mastectomy, a total mastectomy with radiotherapy, and they showed no difference in disease-free and overall survival among the groups. Radiation arms did show decrease in local recurrences, but the safety of regional need of regional node irradiation was questioned due to cardiac mortality seen in patients after 10 years. Meta-analysis of randomized trials for post-mastectomy radiotherapy showed an increase in cardiac-related deaths in those receiving radiation that was almost balanced by a reduction in the deaths due to breast cancer. So cardiac mortality was due to the increase in cardiac dose from radiation, especially when irradiating the internal mammary nodes. Other problems of radiation, greater risk for lymphedema, increased amount of lung that is fibrosed by radiation, primarily from patients that were radiated to the supraclavicular area and internal mammary nodes, and decrease in the quality of cosmesis following reconstruction, especially with implants. So the indications for postmastectomy radiotherapy are now more strict, more limited for very big tumors when we have at least four positive lymph nodes. The risk of local recurrence was about 30% for those patients, which radiation would reduce to almost half. The goal was to reduce local and local recurrence and improve overall survival. The treatment volume is the lymph nodes, the chest wall, and optionally, the internal, uh, internal mammary nodes. Now, the, the treatment for node positive patients was recommended follow mastectomy. The role of post-mastectomy radiotherapy in women with one to three positive no nodes is questionable. And the question if there is any value of treating clinically uninvolved nodes that could be that could influence uh, overall survival. Chemotherapy improved survival, and so there was a question if there is need for radiation after chemotherapy. Uh, has come. Patients with not positive 1 to 3 T1, T2 tumor will receive chemotherapy. And for stage 2 and 3, two and three uh, ladies, they will uh, receive tamoxifen that, might, that will improve disease-free survival and overall survival. But let's see what is the benefit of radiation. In case we have total mastectomy, An axillary lymph node resection, after 20 years, when the lymph nodes are negative, there is no benefit. But if we have positive nodes, there is benefit concerning the uh, recurrence and the death due to cancer. Even if we analyze among those with one to three lymph nodes or more than three, without taking chemotherapy, that's a very interesting. At that era, some patients did receive chemotherapy. There is a clear benefit concerning radiotherapy. So radiotherapy is an independent factor to reduce the deaths and recurrences of uh, breast cancer patients who had already mastectomy. And you can see the plots for the recurrence and for uh, surviving, uh, no matter if they took uh, systematic therapy or not. Adding chemotherapy, still we have an improvement in survival and recurrences uh, when adding radiotherapy. That proves that it is an independent factor, and you can see the plots. Now, if we move to breast-conserving surgery after 15 years, there is improvement to all groups, even if those who have negative lymph nodes. And the reason is that when you preserve the breast, there is an increased possibility of recurrence that can be uh, omitted if you add radiotherapy. So you see the difference in overall survival as well as in less recurrences, no matter if the lymph nodes are positive or not. This is the Danish breast group 
for high risk premenopausal ladies and you see that if they took chemotherapy or chemotherapy plus radiation, they have better overall survival. You see the difference. The same to high risk ladies who receive tamoxifen. Adding radiotherapy, better overall survival. This is the Columbia, the British Columbia, uh, with positive nodes, one to three, four, or all groups, all patients in one group, uh, better survival. But to be honest, these are the trials where there is a clear advantage over survival, but there are also some other trials where you can see, you cannot see, there is a benefit in survival. So, for sure, if we have more than four positive nodes, we should rate those ladies, and we should irradiate ladies with more than five centimeter tumors in case they have at least one lymph node. What's going on with positive margins, big tumors with no lymph nodes, and this intermediate uh, group. Positive margins as a sole factor is not enough to justify radiotherapy because the risk of recurrence is less than 15% unless we have young ladies, big tumors, uh, grade 3 and LBSI. In this case, the recurrence rate is more than 20% and uh, radiotherapy is justified. In this special group with big tumors and non-lymph node involvement, the possibility of recurrence is about 7% in both trials. So radiotherapy is not necessary and you can see the five NSAB trials concerning this special group. There is no need of radiotherapy. If they are young, they have a possibility of uh, about 20%. If they're more than uh, 50 years of age, they have less recurrence rate. But the Canadian dat database recommend radiotherapy for young ladies with receptors negative, medial tumors, and more than 25% of the excised lymph nodes to be positive. So to conclude, this is the groups that radiotherapy is needed, and we have to think about it for the rest. It depends on the kind of tumor we have to treat. This is hair positive, this is triple negative. The danger is greater. This is uh, the variable with age, and you see that the younger the lady, the worse. And they are all factors we have to take in account before we make the decision. Now, let's compare mastectomy with lumpectomy plus radiotherapy. These are all the trials, and there's no different uh, in favor of radical mastectomy as compared to breast conserving surgery for local recurrence or survival. But if we omit radiotherapy after lumpectomy, there is more recurrences and worse survival, so radiotherapy is needed when lumpectomy is performed. Here is the difference for recurrences. And let's go to DCIS. DCIS, you have better local control when you add radiotherapy, but we have to choose which patient should be radiated. For example, if a lady has a small tumor, low grade, with wide clear margins, there is no need of radiation. On the other hand, if we have a big tumor, a high grade and very close margins, then reoperation should be performed. For, our, for our other ladies, radiotherapy is a very good uh, alternative. Uh, this is uh, ZO11. Uh, when we have a positive uh, sentinel node, and it is proved that uh, Axillary lymph node dissection is not necessary because adding radiotherapy to the axilla, we have very low recurrence rate compared to the uh, axillary lymph node dissection. So we can substitute uh, axillary lymph node dissection with radiotherapy. If radiotherapy is so important for lymph nodes, perhaps there is some need to to add radiotherapy to this special kind of early breast cancer, T1, T2, with one to three lymph nodes. As shown in the work of Willand, there is no difference in uh, overall survival, with the exception of one special group with the ladies with 
negative estrogen receptors, leading to the conclusion that perhaps we have to design our trials not according to the states, but according to the uh, special features of the tumor. Acceleration is a new mode in radiotherapy that means bigger daily dose, less fraction, so that we complete the treatment earlier. That was for good tumors, that means early with good features, but now we have trials that we apply this treatment even for very bad tumors, and as you see, it's two weeks shorter, and you see that there is no difference in all the uh, parameters that were evaluated, not even to the uh, side effects. So, is there a group of ladies that we can omit radiotherapy? This is for the elderly if they are operated adequately. In this case, radiotherapy perhaps is not needed. But if they are not operated the right way, then no treatment or tamoxifen alone is not enough. These are the, the uh, recurrences in case we don't irradiate uh, old ladies. It's less than 10% the possibility uh, to recure. There is no difference in overall survival. So this is something that uh, can be omitted. And this is for the fear of money and for the fear of the well-being of the ladies. Though patients and doctors prefer to be th from the safe side, they don't like uh, to be sorry, they prefer to be safe. Most patients are treated. These are the side effects. This is pneumonitis. You see where the coronary artery is very close to the chest wall. So we need very good techniques to avoid the side effects. So this is IMRT technique that should be applied. So we have the ideal distribution of the dose. Special uh, risk for young women who were irradiated suffering lymphoma when they were young. There is at least fourfold uh, more incidence of having uh, breast cancer. And let's move to reconstruction. We have to be very cautious when we decide to combine radiotherapy with reconstruction because we have up to 15% severe complication. Actually, radiotherapy is one factor, but it's not the most important. BMI is the most important. And curiously, aromatase inhibitor is another important factor we should take in account. Listen to this. Does post-operative radiation therapy represent a complication to expand their implant-based immediate breast reconstruction? I would change it. Does expand their implantation-based a contraindication to radiotherapy? Because radiotherapy is a treatment against cancer. Reconstruction is for the well-being of the lady. So let's be a little bit cautious. Here it says that the difference in patient's demise was significant at autologous uh, reconstruction, but not for prostatic reconstruction. These results imply that tumor recurrence and patient demise may be increased when radiation therapy is performed following breast reconstruction. So we have to be very cautious. You see the bad results. Of course, we can uh, repair it but it needs operation. What can a radiation oncology do in this case? How can I radiate this uh, 